Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. I hope this message blesses you today and that you'll be able to send it to someone else who may be experiencing isolation and loneliness and just needs a word of encouragement from heaven. In the very beginning, God noted that it isn't good for a person to be alone. Back in the Garden of Eden, Adam was surrounded by animals, birds, fish, beauty everywhere, and he had fellowship with God himself. And yet God said that Adam needed someone else that he could connect with. That's from the very beginning. We need other people. Even If, you know, maybe you're an an independent person that doesn't even like other people too much, you still need to have some people in your life. And that's how we're wired. It's how we're programmed. It's how we're put together. So here's something that came across my desk that really was interesting. The United States Surgeon General has declared that loneliness has become a profound threat to America's public health, in part because many Americans have stopped going to church. U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy and his team noted that people need to get together. People need to be connected. And he said that religious services, like other types of community events, have historically been an important way for people to become socially connected and to develop meaningful relationships. Here's what his report says. He says, Religious or faith-based groups can be a source for regular social contact as a community of support, provide meaning and purpose, create a sense of belonging around shared values and beliefs, and are associated with reduced risk-taking behaviors. As a consequence of this decline in participation, individuals' health may be undermined in different ways. You know, I can totally understand the fears of loneliness that many people feel. And I agree that it's one of America's biggest problems right now. Even with people who have a lot of friends and an active calendar and a loving family, they still many times feel alone and isolated from other people. And you might feel basically lonely. Maybe you love the Lord, you love the other people in your life, and still can feel lonely. I was remembering an old song that had the line, you don't have to be alone to feel alone. You can have someone and still feel alone. And different people deal with loneliness in different ways. Some people just go out (laughs) and meet a bunch of people. They find a crowd and go mingle or start dancing in the middle of it and have shallow conversations and maybe even do things they don't even enjoy just to keep from feeling isolated or cut off. Some people keep the radio or TV on 24-7 just for some sense of not being alone. Loneliness is something that none of us are exempt from. We all feel that from time to time. And it can come from different things like a marriage or relationship breakup, or losing a loved one or a friend moving away, or moving somewhere where we don't know anybody yet, or taking a new job or being transferred. Not having a church and group of Christian friends to fellowship with is a big thing that can make a Christian feel lonely. Even our Surgeon General knows that. What a surprise, and a good surprise. And even though we have access to more people than ever before and can interact with people around the world, hundreds of them if we want to, there is also an epidemic of loneliness and people who find themselves in isolation. You know, we can have dozens or hundreds or thousands of friends on social media and still not feel a connection with even one of them. And even worse, we can look at all their pictures of them where they're out there having all these incredible lives and parties and social events and going out to eat with all their happy friends, doing all kinds of fun things, and it can make us feel even more lonely. And for a lot of people, it can cause a sense of stress, a sense of feeling lost, disconnected and hopeless. And God recognizes this struggle and reminds us that we're not alone in our feelings. In Psalm 25, verse 16, David cries out to God, turn to me and be gracious to me because I am lonely and afflicted. And I want to tell you that when we acknowledge our emotions and bring them before God, we open ourselves 
to receive his help and comfort from the Holy Spirit, from God's comforter. One problem that a lot of people have is when we don't really like the kind of person we are, we try to get more out of our friendships than they can provide. That's very common. We look to our friends to provide the happiness and the satisfaction and the sense of meaning in life that really can only come from the inside of us when we're at peace with God and at peace with ourselves. And the fact is, other people can't do it for us. No human being can do that for us. And when we expect them to do that for us, we end up smothering them, driving them away, being too overbearing, too needy. And you've probably know, you probably know people that do that. They do what's called overkill. And so before long, their few friends that they have drop them and try to avoid them. And they end up lonely again, all because they were trying to avoid loneliness. And it's really sad. That's one reason why the Lord put this on my heart today. You know, we can understand friendships and we can misunderstand friendships. And we can expect people to do for us what no one can do. A friend isn't someone whose job it is to make us happy. A friend isn't someone who will be available to meet our emotional needs 24-7. A friend isn't someone who wants to hear all of our problems all of the time. A friend isn't someone who will always agree with us no matter what. Here's one. A friend isn't someone we can be rude to and then will never hold us accountable or responsible for it. A friend isn't someone who only looks out for you and never looks out for themselves and never gets to have their own life so that they can be available to us all the time. And I want to talk about some ways, some ways to overcome that loneliness. I had to learn that we won't make friends until we're willing to show ourselves friendly and to sow the seeds of friendship. People won't just go out and discover us. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 24 that the person who would have friends must show themselves to be friendly. I need to demonstrate that I'm approachable. I'm interested in other people, that I'm easy to be around. And then I need to do that where people are already gathered. Church is a place where I was able to find and make friends, but I had to show that I was friendly and be approachable and easy to be around. I couldn't just stand there waiting for them to come to me. And that verse, Proverbs 18, verse 24, says also that there's a friend, that's Jesus, who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is that friend that sticks closer than a brother. So first, I had to be at peace with myself. I mean, if I don't like me, how can I expect anybody else to take the time to find out if I'm good friendship material or not? I need to become friends with the Lord. I need to demonstrate my friendliness and respect for other people. We need to be genuinely interested in them, not just for what can they do for me. We need to be interested in their situations and hurts and all of that. We need to focus on them and not just on ourselves and our interests. Be interesting. Be pleasant. Be upbeat. Nobody wants to hang around a person who's a wine box just sitting around complaining. Also, I had to learn that other people are human. They're not perfect. They're not going to be thinking about me and my feelings all the time, even if I wanted them to. They won't and they can't. People will let you down. They'll disappoint you. Even good friends have faults. I had to ask the Lord to help me to believe the best and to give people the benefit of the doubt. I had to learn to forgive. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So I had to learn to cut people some slack. I had to learn to give people grace and be a lot more merciful to people. God wants to help us deal with our loneliness as we draw near to him, and then we can receive the comfort that only he can give. He says in Isaiah 41, verse 10, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God promises to be with us through every season of life, including the isolating ones. His presence brings us incredible sense of comfort and peace, reminding us that we're never totally alone. The Bible emphasizes the importance of community, encouraging us to seek and support other people and to get together with other like-minded people. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 10 say, Two are better than good. One, because 
They have a good return for their labor. If one of them falls, the other can lift them up. And together, we can encourage, support, and uplift each other and become true friends and be able to enjoy a true friendship and a true relationship. You know, getting involved here at church, so many of our worship people have found that that's been a pipeline for connecting with like-minded people who share our values and our beliefs and they help us through our various struggles. One other thing is this. Times of loneliness and isolation can also be seasons of growth and spiritual transformation. I think of what God tells us in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. It says that we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So through our trials, we have the opportunity to develop our resilience, our ability to bounce back to deepen our faith, and to cultivate a sense of hope that's beyond our circumstances and our problems. And many of God's people have found that the experience of loneliness can draw us closer to God, enabling us to rely on His strength and on His grace and can give us more empathy and more compassion for other people. And guess what? That empathy and compassion can be what causes us to show ourselves to be friendly or approachable to them. And they become our friends as we become friends to them. Last, and this is the really important one, take these principles and apply them, apply these principles to your friendship with Jesus. Be friendly to Jesus and show yourself friendly to Jesus. Don't expect him to come seeking you out while you're busy watching TV or hanging out on social media. Seek him out. And let him know that you value his presence. You value his closeness in your life. And like with any friend, don't just come to Jesus with your complaints list. Tell him what's going well in your life, things you're happy about, things that bless you, things that encourage you, things you're thankful for. And be real with him. Don't put on some fake personality to try to impress him. He knows what you're all about anyway. When you're with Jesus, also be a good listener. Listen to what he says to you through the word of God and through prayer. Be loyal to him. And when you're around your cool friends, don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't snub him or make him feel like you're not his friend. Don't be ashamed to know Jesus. Don't be ashamed to have him as your Lord and Savior. And take time with him like you would any other friend. Ask for his forgiveness when you need it. Ask him to draw near to you and to help you to be a better person and a better friend to him. It's not good to be alone. Become a person that you would want to spend time with. How do we do that? By spending time with Jesus, picking up his mannerisms, his heart, his mindset, his caring for people, his values, and the abundant life that you receive from Jesus will spill over into your outer life, and then you'll find God bringing quality people into your life and bringing you into their lives. And I hope this little message helped you. I hope it encouraged you. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. That helps the algorithms to say, let's show more people this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And click the little bell so you get notified every time I bring you a new message. And share this with some of your friends. You probably know some people who are lonely and feel isolated and and left out. Just sharing this video with them will encourage them and let them know that you're thinking about them. They haven't been forgotten about, that they are thought about and cared about. And last, pray for me. I always need it. I always ask people to pray for me, and I always value it. Thank you so much. God bless you. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org, or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening, and God bless you and your family.